So back in 1949, the Ampeg Base Amp Company was founded. Ampeg actually originally got its start as the Michael slash Hull Electronics Lab. And it was originally founded by Mr. Stanley Michael and Mr. Everett Hull in Chicago. And shortly thereafter, Mr. Hull broke off and started the Ampeg Base Amplifier Company. Keep in mind, 1949, there really wasn't, there was no such thing as solid body electric basses. When you played bass, you played upright. Uh, the story goes that Mr. Hull took the end pin, which is the metal rod that supports your upright bass, and installed a microphone on the end of it and reinstalled that back through the F-hole of his upright bass. And he actually started calling it the Amplified Peg, hence the name Ampeg. It's kind of interesting to think what the bass industry or the bass amplifier industry would be like today if not for those first steps in designing amplification for, for bass players. Another really interesting milestone in the history of the company was the B15 Portaflex flip top. And this was designed by, at that time, Mr. Jess Oliver was the president and designer of Ampeg. Also another bass player. At that point, electric bass was becoming popular and bass players needed to be heard. And this amp really revolutionized what bass amplification was. The top of the amplifier would actually flip right side up, hence the name flip top, and that's how you would use the amp. And then when you would transport it, you'd unlatch both sides and then flip it upside down so the amplifier would hang inside the cabinet. Mr. Oliver even said he got the idea from his wife's sewing machine. The other important part of that amplifier is that it's arguably the most recorded bass amp in pop music history. Everything that was coming out of California, everything that was coming out of Nashville, just about every major recording studio in the country were using B-15s. So uh, the B-15 really uh, put Ampeg on the map. In 1969, Ampeg came out with the SVT and that pretty much changed everything. 300 watts of all two power coupled to, at that time, it was designed to be used with two 810 cabinets. I think bass players soon figured out that one 810 cabinet was plenty loud enough for a lot of the gigs that we were doing. Up until that point, there really wasn't anything that sounded like an SVT nor incorporated the use of multiple 10 inch speakers. At that point, it was all 15s and 18s. And the advantage to a 10-inch speaker being that if you use a bunch of them in a cluster, you still move a ton of air, but the small speaker allows for a quick frequency response or a quick dampening factor. So you get a lot of high end and response out of those smaller speakers. A couple of other things that people don't realize about Ampeg, we were the first company to use a reverb tank and a guitar amp. That's right, Ampeg does guitar amps from time to time. Uh, we've done them in the past and we'll probably at some point continue to develop guitar amps as well. There you go guys, that is that is the history and the lineage of this iconic brand. First and foremost, we are a bass amp company and we continue to develop and revolutionize the way bass amplification is heard.